you. What tools do you actually need in your Mercedes? So, Tom has asked me this this morning, even though I think if I gave Thomas like a toolkit, I don't know if he'd know what, what, would you know what to do with it? What would you put in it first? Yeah, okay, well. Fair question. So we were thinking about what we would put in our toolkit in a Mercedes, and so, I know that some people travel with like a ridiculous amount of tools. I have a friend whose name I'm not gonna name, but boy, does he have a lot of tools in his trunk. Tons of tools, and they're all pretty new. He doesn't even have to use them because he has a diesel. But, I mean, you know, he'll have like half his trunk full of tools. I'm like, what the, <laughs> What are you preparing for here, exactly? Taking apart an airplane or something in case you have to fly to a fuel station in case you run out of diesel, you know? Uh, and this begs the question, if you're maintaining your Mercedes diesel right, how many things can really go wrong? So, I'm going to give you a short list of all the tools you need, and I'm going to tell you all the tools you probably shouldn't need if you're maintaining your car right. In your factory Mercedes toolkit, you'll find a bunch of open end wrenches. 8, 10, 11, 13, 17, 19. Some of, some of them have a glow plug wrench that's 21 millimeters. Then you'll find some pliers and you'll find um, a fuse puller tool and a spark plug wrench. So if we look at these tools, sure, most of them are there. I think we can improve on this just a little bit though. The Mercedes Phillips and flathead screwdriver combination is really quite good. I would add a short Phillips and a short flathead, but the factory tool is really unbelievably good. I would add ring wrenches. You know, I would add 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 19, 22, 24, and 27 millimeter wrenches to my toolkit. I would also probably add a test light a pair of vice grips, an adjustable wrench, a small adjustable wrench. Your factory lug wrench is, su is sufficient, but I would add a pipe bar, a, a pipe or a bar, maybe an old jack handle or something. I think that's a good thing to have. Um, it's a good idea to have your fluids in the trunk and an extra set of fuel filters if you have a diesel. If you have a gasoline car, a genuine Mercedes condenser and points if you have battery ignition would be a great idea. Maybe a spare fuel pump relay or at least a fuel pump relay bypass wire to bypass the fuel pump at pins 87 and 15. On a gasoline car, it also doesn't hurt to carry an extra set of spark plugs, or at least one or two extra spark plugs. It also doesn't hurt to carry an extra set of lug bolts for the inevitable tire change. Maybe some brake fluid, power steering fluid, transmission fluid, distilled water, or coolant. And I also like to carry a little voltmeter with me that plugs into the 12 volt power supply, previously known as a lighter socket, when people used to do that thing in their cars. Uh, I also think that a good thing to have in your trunk is a, um, an, maybe an extra alternator belt or a rope, a set of jumper cables because you never know when you're going to need a set of jumper cables, and uh, maybe a safety triangle because they're cool. Now, Mercedes are not breakdown prone cars. I don't want to give people that impression. Really, I have ended up using my toolkit more than anything to help other Mercedes owners who have not had the opportunity to maintain their car so well or don't have a highly dependable 123 series turbo diesel. But I'm going to tell you what you probably should not be carrying around in your trunk. Don't carry a freaking floor jack, maybe a mini jack, but not a giant floor jack. I don't think you should really carry around a pair of jack stands. If you really want to carry around one jack stand and hear it banging around in your trunk, fine. But you know, why? You don't, I mean, you could carry a socket set, a basic small and large socket set. That's fine. What I can't stand seeing are like three or four different socket sets, a whole box full of loose <laughs> sockets. I mean, be organized. You know, if you really want to ruin your driving experience, listen to sockets rattling in the truck. <laughs> I used to carry a socket set of my 115. Never had to use it on the car, except one time when I had to change a tire. But otherwise, I just never, never needed it. Um, while I do recommend carrying, uh, you know, some electrical testing equipment, I don't recommend carrying like 
a bunch of extra wire and electrical connectors and all sorts of stuff in the trunk. Sure, a spare glow plug is a good idea, especially if you have a parallel glow plug car. You know, this would be 1979 and earlier diesels. But I don't understand why anybody would need to carry, like, I, I had a guy that carried spools of wire in his trunk with an electrical repair kit. And I said, why? And he goes, what if I have to do an electrical repair on the road? I mean, what, what are you doing to your freaking car to cause it to need a major electrical repair on the road? You know, are you not capable of maintaining your car even though you think you are? I don't know. But having a certain amount of tools in the trunk and being overprepared can actually lead to more confusion and frustration than anything. And that's one of the reasons why I keep my tools to a minimum. In fact, when I'm going to like my in-laws or going to see a friend or whatever, the 300D, I don't even carry tools with me. I have my factory toolkit. I don't even carry them because there's no substitute for a well-maintained car. There just isn't. And stuff usually doesn't just go wrong when you're really paying attention to the needs of the car. Okay, that was a mouthful. So, two more things that I want to tell you. If you're going to carry fuses, carry ceramic fuses like genuine Mercedes style fuses. Who cares if they are copper or not? Pewter fuses worked fine for decades. I mean, I know copper is better, but pewter gets the job done. What you don't want are plastic bus fuses. You want your electrical circuit to fail? Plastic bus fuses. Okay, next. If you're gonna carry a toolkit, don't have it loose in your trunk. Keep it organized. You know, when I open somebody's trunk and I see a disorganized toolkit, or I see too many tools like a torque wrench. Why on earth would you need a freaking torque wrench? Giant torque wrench. You know, sure a set of hexes is fine, but why would you need three different packets of Allens? If you have an older Mercedes, you don't need Torx head screws at all for anything. So why? Why even have them, you know? But when I, when I see too much stuff or I see a mess, I'm like, automatically this person doesn't trust their car. Or they don't trust themselves, one of the two. So anyway. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Tap the bell for notifications and leave us a comment below. If you're one of those people that carries too many tools in your car, you know, I guess it doesn't hurt to be prepared, but maybe you should think about minimize, mi, 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 eh, eh, minimalism as a philosophy when owning your Mercedes Benz. Anyway, enjoy this video, and hopefully you guys got some useful advice out of it, and we'll see you next time. Hopefully not because you had a breakdown, but because you wanted to say, man, what was that list that Pierre gave again? That sounds really practical. Anyway, <laughs> see you next time, guys. Don't forget to tap that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Is